here is another one of our 625 square foot homes. We're going to put some green fascia board on this baby and throw an 8 and 12 roof pitch on it. Something like this might be a design you would use for a granny flat or what now we're referring to as an ADU. And I believe ADU stands for accessory dwelling unit. So no grannies in the ADU, otherwise it'd be a granny flat. So let's go ahead and take the roof off of it. And for those of you just watching this for the first time, this is about the fifth or sixth video in a series. You can also relocate the living room to the back and the kitchen to the front if that's also going to work better for your project. Leave all this area the same or simply flip the entire floor plan over from front to back. Let's go ahead and install our ceiling joist 2 by 6 16 inches on center and we're going to butt them halfway over the wall and if we do that we're going to have to install a strap at least every 48 inches. That's usually the minimum to create rafter ties for a gable roof. And then we're going to go ahead and block it down the center. I'll show you the blocks here in a little bit. And let's go ahead and head over to the other side here to show you where the ceiling joist will be sitting on top of the wall. With full bearing, we're not going to pull them back, even though you can. I believe the minimum distance is an inch and a half that the ceiling joists need to have to transfer the load through the ceiling joist to the walls. So that would be a load bearing situation. Go ahead and head over to the access hole and then we can go ahead and install our ceiling backing. And I'm also going to run a row of mid span blocks on both sides to provide you with another example of something you can do if that will work on your project. I don't think I have this in the other houses that I have for this playlist. Now I went ahead and installed the ceiling joist backing between the blocks here on this one. Next up let's go ahead and head underneath give you a view of the access opening along with the ceiling backing. And some of you are probably wondering why I didn't double up these joists. And that's because I didn't feel it was necessary. However, you might need to on your project. It will depend upon the structural engineer in your area. Now I went ahead and ran this all the way to the block. This can actually stop over here. I just kind of ran it over to get some better nailing for this backing. And again, something else you can do if it will work for your project, but not necessary. Next up, let's head over to the exterior wall to show you where the backing will stop over here. It's going to be an inch and a half away from the wall because I'm going to be installing blocking in between the joist and the rafters. Also, we can take a look at the backing here. This block is going to notch. We're going to have a notch over the backing. Unlike over here where we butt the backing up against the block on each side, over here we notched the block and then ran this as a solid piece from this point to this point. Next up, let's take a look at how I staggered these blocks so that I could get better nailing. You can nail these blocks easier from both sides than you can if you have a situation like this where the blocks are going to be in a straight line. So again, straight line, staggered and staggered. And let's go ahead and take a look at these two walls, what I did here. And I believe I described this in the other videos. These walls need to be stabilized. So if I can nail the backing to the wall and the joist, that'll be great. If not, I'm going to have to install some type of a block in between the joist and then nail that block to the joist and to the backing. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof rafters. Take a look at the blocks, how they're going to notch over the ceiling joist, providing you with another method that might work better for your project. And the rafters are 2 by 8, everything 16 inches on center. And next up, let's build our gable wall. And I'm going to install a brace over here, a brace in the center, and a brace over here. And I'm also going to have those braces on the other side also. So we have our outer boards notched for our 2x4 lookouts or outlookers, however you want to reverse that. We'll just call them our fascia board holder uppers. So here we have a brace. I went ahead and installed 2x6 flat backing here and then installed a 2x6 here to help support the ridge a little bit better. 
And the reason why I did this is just to provide you with another example of something you can do if the wall framing studs are going to be longer than 10 feet. But again, to verify all this, you would have to check with your local building department, structural engineers, or contractors. And I went ahead and installed a block here in between the rafters so that I could attach the brace to the block and the rafter and then attach it to the ceiling joist and the mid-span block here. And of course I did the same on the other side. Go ahead and take a closer look at it. Another view there. Let's head up to the top. And you could have a situation where you got to get in between the rafter, your backing, or some other obstacles making this brace a little more difficult to install. And if that's the case, simply attach it to one of the gable studs or move it back and attach it to this rafter here because something is usually going to be better than nothing when it comes to making a building stronger with braces. And again, you might not need those braces. I just kind of threw them in there to provide you with another thing that you might be able to do on your project. And of course, I didn't need this board to go all the way up. This board is meant to provide us with a little more nailing to connect the gable studs to the roof rafter. Again, making something a little stronger. Now I went ahead and I shaped the top of the roof ridge to provide better nailing for the roof sheathing. And I really think this is a good idea for steeper roof pitches. And next up, let's go ahead and install our fascia board, our lookouts here, and our outlookers over here. Let's just hope that pretty soon I don't start calling these outriggers. And if there's one thing I can say about the construction industry, they have a variety of different names for the exact same part, making your job as a do-it-yourselfer a little more difficult to figure out what they're actually talking about. So I hope I'm not messing you up here. Don't forget to install the collar ties 48 inches on center. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at how these boards are notched into the roof framing rafter to provide cantilevered support to help hold up the fascia board. And I will be getting around to doing a video on people that just nail some 2x4s together and create some boxes and attaching it to the roof rafter with what I would consider to be substandard structural support. And I think the problems get even worse when you're dealing with heavy snow loads or the wrong building materials. And in this example, the bottom of the fascia board is shaped to provide us with some better nailing for our roof sheathing. So let's go ahead and wrap the video up here by taking one last look at the house. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.